Thanks for clicking. All eyes were on the Bank of Canada this morning as it was set to make its highly anticipated interest rate announcement. With the banks, the media, and of course the real estate industry all predicting a rate cut coming from our central bank. We got our answer at 9.45 this morning when, after starting its rate hiking cycle in February of 2022, the Bank of Canada finally dropped rates by 25 basis points. Hey, I'll give you the money to put the eat on. Indeed, this is no doubt good news for the real estate industry, and as we'll see today, we're obviously going to see predictions of further rate cuts and prices to the moon. Yet, as we'll see today, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem was quick to throw water on any notions that we're going to see rapid rate cuts in the near future. Not that he wasn't asked ad nauseum by the financial giants that are Canadian media. Let's just enjoy the moment for a bit. Remember the little moments. Yep, by my account, the governor was asked four times about potential rate cuts, bringing the total rate cut questions for the year to 20 across five press conferences. You'll all pass. But the governor was also asked some very substantive questions about the housing market, about the renewal crisis, and about quantitative tightening. So what I want to do today is go over the bank's interest rate announcement, take a look at that press conference, and then go over some implications. As we'll see today, the governor stressed over and over again that the bank is going to be data dependent when deciding on interest rates. We are waiting for Canada's inflation data for May coming out from StatsCan in a few weeks, and we'll obviously have an update out on that data on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, let's get into this rate cut. Onto the rate cut. As mentioned, the Bank of Canada cut interest rates for the first time since it began its tightening cycle back in early 2022. The bank noted that core measures of inflation, the bank's preferred metrics, have showed downward momentum over the past three months. And as such, the policy rate doesn't need to remain as restrictive as it once was. I handled it. I Bond yields fell following the announcement, though not by much, maybe seven basis points less than they rose last week on concerns over U.S. debt, bringing them back to where they were in March of this year. And very briefly, we'll save some real estate boards and their members some time in trying to figure out why that is, in that today's announcement really only affects variable rates. Fixed mortgage rates, which are driven by the bond market, which is driven by global factors, didn't really move. So, despite what you're going to no doubt see in article after article in the coming weeks, literally took about a half hour after the announcement for the Globe and Mail to note that this rate cut could breath life into the real estate market. Oh, come on, come on, type faster. The rate cut we saw today probably won't provide any additional affordability, any additional buying power to those looking to jump into the market. Regardless, moving on to the press conference, the governor made an attempt, futile though it may have been, to get ahead of the impending rate cut questions. If inflation continues to ease and our confidence that inflation is headed sustainably to the 2% target continues to increase, it is reasonable to expect further cuts in our policy interest rate. But that didn't stop Canada's giants of financial journalism from pushing the governor on questions that he was never ever going to answer three consecutive times. You previously said that you won't be cutting rates at the rate that you raise them. Does this mean Canadians should not expect a cut next month or do you plan to cut again in July? See the look on Roger's face. The governor was pressed again about potential rate cuts and again he didn't answer, noting surprisingly that it'll be dependent on the data. And I want to stress this, the timing of any further cuts is going to depend on incoming data. Uh, it, 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 in particular, is going to depend on what those incoming data tell us about the most likely future path for inflation. Tomorrow then. Yeah, do these reporters really think the governor is going to say we'll get a rate cut in July, two in September, and four for Christmas? Look at the deputy governor's face as they wait for another question. He was asked again one more time by the Wall Street Journal about potential rate cuts, and the governor just kind of shrugged it off. The path for interest rates likely to be gradual. Regardless, after the governor was done being frustrated momentarily with reporters, he did actually receive some fairly substantive questions. First off, 
about the Fed divergence. Um, building on Paul's question about uh, the limit on how much Canada can diverge from other countries in terms of interest rates, can you talk a little bit about what that limit looks like and what it means for Canada right now to be diverging from any of its peer countries? And yeah, that's a good question. We've talked about that before on this channel, with many worrying that if the Bank of Canada diverges too much from the Federal Reserve, that could put downward pressure on our dollar, which would effectively have Canada importing inflation making everything we buy from abroad even more expensive. For his part, the governor explained what he always does, that Canada has a floating exchange rate, Whoa! but also noted that there is in fact room for Canada to diverge from the Fed. There are limits to how, how far we can diverge from the United States, but we're, we're not close to those limits. And uh, I, I expect you know, we will continue to be able to get inflation back to target uh, and run monetary policy in Canada within those. Then, for some reason, Bloomberg's John Ehrlichman asked basically the same question 15 minutes later. Soon thereafter, the same question was asked again by Mace News. Look at Rogers laughing. And then one more time by the Financial Post 10 minutes later. How far can you diverge before it starts to uh, flow into problems with the currency and markets like the bond market, that kind of thing. To which the governor basically gave the same answer. I'm not going to tell you again. If you're counting, that six questions asked by Canada's financial media, all of which, maybe save one, the governor was never ever going to answer. Regardless, the governor was also asked about the housing market. In that, is the Bank of Canada concerned that these rate cuts could reignite prices? To which Rogers really didn't respond. There is some pent up um, demand in the housing market, we'll see how it goes. The bank was then pressed again about the housing market, but more in terms of the renewal wave set to hit in 2025 and 2026. For her part, Deputy Governor Rogers did acknowledge that the bank is keeping an eye on the renewal wave set to hit in the next few years, but also noted what she said during the financial stability report, that the bank has a particular eye on renters. You know, we know mortgage, uh, people holding mortgages um, are feeling the squeeze. We know there is uh, concern about uh, higher interest rates when they renew their mortgage. Um, but the, the effect of the, the credit stress we see is also showing up in, in renters too. And, you know, that's, that's really um, inflation as well as, as interest rates showing up. So. Um, what we can do to help that situation is get inflation back to target. We know. So, judging from the statement at least, the bank isn't overly concerned about the wave of renewals coming up in the next few years. Instead, focusing on inflation, which affects everyone. With all of that said, my guess is yes, the bank is probably concerned about the renewal crisis coming up over the next few years to the extent that it could impact employment. But it's not going to say that publicly. They're not going to come out and say publicly, yeah, we need to drop rates because the banks can't take the hit. And then finally, one of the most substantive questions actually came from outside of the country, the Nikkei News Service. You decided to cut rates. Uh, you also decided to continue quantitative uh, tightening. It seems to me that you're stepping on uh, the gas and brake pedals at the same time. So how do you determine when to stop QT and what are the conditions for that? See the difference? And it is a good question. The Bank of Canada is currently engaging in quantitative tightening, as we talked about so many times on this channel, basically sucking money out of the economy, letting the government pay back the bonds that are coming due without buying new ones. But if it is in fact loosening policy, if the bank is cutting rates, then isn't it in fact engaging in a contradictory policy? For his part, the governor said that this is just one cut. The policy rate is still restrictive, though not as restrictive as it could be. If we were to lower interest rates so much that we're that we're actually pro trying to provide stimulus to the economy, um, you know, that would be a different situation. And in that situation, we probably would uh, stop QT because in, and then they would be working at cross purposes. But that that's not the situation we're in now. So we have the first Bank of Canada rate cut that we've seen since March of 2020, the first one since it started its rate tightening cycle back in 2022. The Canadian media does what it does, acts as a shill for the real estate industry, but we do get at least a few substantial questions out of the central bank. The bank did acknowledge that there is a limit on how far it can diverge from the Fed, but of course, no matter how many times they're asked, they're not going to tell us what that limit is. If they did, we could kind of figure out where interest rates were heading, couldn't we?
Well, I'm not very good at math. And finally, the Bank of Canada is concerned about the housing market reigniting and is going to keep an eye on the data, which tells me that the bank isn't going to continue to loosen if it sees prices heading to the moon. So any predictions that these lower rates will lead to a return of pandemic level pricing could very well be an error. With that said, as the governor noted today, the bank is going to remain data dependent and will obviously continue to track Canada's inflation data on this channel. Click, like, and subscribe if you want to get those updates. But for now, thanks so much for watching.